Hello. All right. Getting started. YouTube is apparently under a lot of load or something right now, so it was making it difficult for me to get set up. Hello, it's it's Ryan. Okay. Looks like things are working. Nice. All right. So let's get into it. Uh, I need to change my scene here. Crime. Oh, look, it's me. I'm tiny in the corner now. Uh, all right, cool. So an error had occurred. Great. I might not be as responsive to chat today because the YouTubes are not tubing very well. Ah, okay. Anyway, so, uh, but I have my awesome lecture assistants, Agatha, Ryan, Patrick, and Emma, who will be uh, trying to answer questions in the chat. So today we're going to be talking about lists more. Uh, didn't we talk about lists way back at the beginning of the semester? Yeah, and there's been a lot of points in the semester where I've said, uh, this doesn't, this is kind of a lie. This is kind of a lie. Um, but I'll tell you the, the real truth when you're older. Uh, well, now we're all older, and we're all a lot older, I think, now, uh, proportionately. Um, so today we're going to learn a lot of how things actually work, more or less, inside of Python. So get excited. We're, we're having some, some truths revealed today. Announcements. I mean, Project 1 is out. Um, the Office Hours bot was down, so Office Hours are delayed. Um, we haven't the, the, the bot is running on a Raspberry Pi in a TA's home, uh, thank you, thanks to that TA, uh, and we still need to work on migrating it to something that won't be in a, uh, somebody's house, so something on the cloud, ooh, the cloud. Um, okay, any other announcements? The lab is due on Tuesday, I believe. Wow, the sort it just keeps conking out. Um, so the lab is due on Tuesday. I think it's worth the full 10 points because there's no pre-lab for this one. Um, and yeah, so we're gonna continue into the unknown here with this semester, so. Uh, but first, before we get into advanced lists and mutability and all that good stuff, let's let's go back over dictionaries. So I'm big in this. So the goal here is a little live coding exercise. See if you can figure it out. Uh, Usually we strictly forbid pasting code into chats, but um, if you're doing the live coding exercise and you want to share a little snippet of your answer, go ahead and pop that in the chat for uh, the YouTube video. Um, that's fine uh, because it's a live coding exercise. We're just doing this to practice and learn, so it's not an assignment. All right, so what we have here is I want to right now it enters a student name and quits when done and what i want to be able to do at the end is print out all of the students with their associated email and favorite sound right so the question is how do we do this this is kind of a tricky tricky question so uh they're going to enter student names until uh we we hit quit and then uh it's going to dump out all of the it'll say something like um uh, Ryan Barron, uh, let's see, uh, Ryan's email and his favorite sound, which is probably, uh, I don't know, an iron block being broken down I don't know, in Minecraft. I don't know, we're just making stuff up. So let's, so what I would expect is you're going to type in and get to work if you haven't started. I would type in something like Ben, and then I would type in Ben J1. Then I would type in my favorite sound, uh, a cat purring. Yeah, a cat purring. That's that's up there, or like a distant train whistle. Uh, and at the end, I wanted to print out after I collect a bunch of those, so I could put in Charlie. His email is cdog at dogmail.com, and his. Uh, favorite sound is food hitting a bowl. And at the end, I wanted to print Ben can be contacted 
at benj1 mu and their favorite sound is cat purring and repeat the process for Charlie and so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, I'm probably not showing you the live coding. Oops. Oops. Now it's not showing PyCharm at all. Oops. Wow. Today's a struggle fest. Well, we, we carry on. Sorry, guys. Window capture. Yeah, new window capture. Wow, it really just like stopped making do. And I, the chat's not updating on my phone, so I didn't, I'm sure you're all like, oh my gosh, I can't see what you're doing. Where is PyCharm? Ha ha, boom. Okay. Oh, that's moderately helpful. Fit to screen. Boom. And then, uh, of course, we have to have my brain shining face. You don't want to be deprived of my sleepy face. Okay, let me go look at the chat, as this, I'm sure, is exploding. Oh, I can't even connect to chat. Great, I hope this is working at all. Well, I can see the stream's actually streaming. Uh, I can't actually see the chat. This, this kind of compromises the whole point of what we're doing. Let's try again. Okay, maybe there's no chat. I guess if you have questions, throw them in the Discord in the general chat. I guess. I guess. Oh, YouTube. Poor, poor YouTube. Drowning in success. Okay. Well, this is making this even harder to do. Uh, so I can't, I guess I can't take questions. Pop, like I said, put them in the Discord. Um, if you're not on the Discord yet, get on the Discord. That's where we're doing office hours. And I guess it's our backup plan um, if things don't work in the chat, which stinks. All right, so I'm gonna start coding this out. So what we need, from it's the, from the dictionary lecture and it says make a dictionary at the top. We're gonna make a dictionary and it's gonna be student info. And then I'm going to make it empty. And so the question is, so uh, we had keys and values for dictionaries. And the keys are the things, they're the things we say when we, we have the, the bag and we say the magical word and the thing disappears. And then we say the magical word and get them back. The magical word is the key and the value is the thing that goes in the bag. So what should the key be here? I would usually pause to look and see if any of you had suggestions, but alas, alack. So... Um, what I'll do is student info, the key will be uh, the boop, boop, boop. The key will be the student's name. So uh, I guess I could change this to name to be a bit more clear. Uh, rename. Cool. And then I can do student info name because name will be the key. And then I can make a dictionary inside of here. And this is a totally legal way to make a dictionary. And I can put some values in there. So I can put in email is email. And sound is sound. Like that. So I've hard coded some keys here. Um, do these need to be constants? It's actually helpful that they are. Um, when I was writing the chat bot for Discord uh, with Min, I was using constants for the keys. Uh, I'm not gonna do that here because it's, it's kind of an, an, an extra bit. So um, we're gonna go down here and we're gonna say for key in student info but what is our key, right? So our key was name. So I can actually just say name in student info. I'm gonna print, uh, what did I have down here? Uh, name can be contacted at email and their favorite sound is sound. 
try to do format. Um, first will be name, then will be student info, uh, student info, name, email. Oh my gosh, I did two of them in a row. <gasps> and then student info, name, uh, sound. I'm just going to put this on a separate line so that it's, it's a bit more legible. So let's run it. Man, my computer's fan is going bananas. Ben. Ben J1. Whoops. Ben J1. Whatever. Ben 1. Enter their favorite sound. Purring. Uh, we're going to go Natalie. Her email is nat at nat.com. And her favorite sound is microborks. Just trying not to laugh. And then I'm going to put quit because I'm done. <laughs> okay. So Ben can be, uh, this might be a little small. Uh, I guess I can put this in presentation mode. Oh, but I, I want to see the run. Thing. Oh no. Oh, oh no. Oh my gosh. It's getting, it, it gets worse before it gets better sometimes. Okay. So anyway, at the bottom it is working correctly and it's printing out all the students and the student information that they put in there. So, cool. Uh, yeah, you can ask questions in general. It's fine. Um, okay. So, hope you guys have questions about that. You're going to be using dictionaries for the project. So, have fun with that. Uh, and that's sort of how they work. And you can have dictionaries of dictionaries, where the value is a dictionary. And today we're going to talk about lists of lists. Oh my gosh. So, um, it, it, it goes deeper. It's turtles all the way down. So, uh, can, can we put a list in another list? Can I put a bunch of lists in another list? How would I use this to represent a chessboard? Hmm. Okay. Hmm. So, you back when you guys tried to break uh, my computer at the beginning of the semester. So let me change back to PyCharm. Boop. Uh, to begin. To do Python. So. Uh, when you tried to break my computer back at the beginning of the semester, that's usually, I think you, I mean, you guys definitely suggested that. So if I have uh, cats, I can make it an empty list, and I can do cats dot append um, another list, and we'll make it purring tabby or something like that. And if I look at cats, it has these two square brackets on the end. So when you look at a list, the amount of leading square brackets, the, the square brackets at the front, indicate usually how many dimensions that list is. So a flat list of single items is a one-dimensional list, and then a list of lists is a two-dimensional list. So let's put something else in cats. Um, Cats.append uh, sleeping manx. And I look at cats again. And so now the first thing in cats is purring tabby. And the second thing in cats is sleeping manx. So how do I get back using the square brackets for indexing? How do I get tabby? How do I access tabby from that list, that two-dimensional list? Think about that for a second. How do I get to tabby? Hmm. Hmm. Actually, I should bring up Discord chat on my phone. And see if there's questions there. I'm kind of iffy about the name. Name is the key. The actual value is the name. Well, no, the name is the key. So Ben is the key. If I print it out uh, from this exercise up here, what the actual dictionary looks like. Uh, student info. We'll see what it looks like. 
So this is a question about the previous thing that I just now saw. So Ben, enter an email, B at B, enter their favorite sound, per, uh, enter a student named Jules, enter an email, J at JJ, and enter their favorite sound, um, nip. And then I'm gonna quit. And let's look at the dictionary here. So we have a dictionary. The key here is Ben, and the value is information about Ben. And the key here is Jules, and the value is information about Jules. Okay, so let's go back to the Python console. So how do we get to Tabby? Well, we want the first list in cats, which we get with zero. And then in that first list, we want the second item, which we get with one. Ta-da! So that's all there is to it, but it's tricky because it, it becomes easy to forget which numbers go where and all this other stuff. So if we look at this previous line of code again, think about this. Cats zero, right? Doing cats zero gives me the list purring tabby. So actually if I remove this, and I just do cat zero purring tabby. So now what I can do is I can add the one index to that to just get tabby. So it, it you're kind of burrowing down to get to the actual single value that you want. Cool, I'm glad somebody got it. So then what about, are we limited on how many dimensions we can have in a list? How, how many? Is there, is there a limit? It's 3D list, yeah, cats, cats, cats. Cats, cats, cats. So, no, actually there, there is no limit. You can have lists of 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 lists, of lists, of lists, of lists all the way out past the sunset, right? So uh, let's make this two-dimensional list three-dimensional by having, an, we'll, make a, we'll make a dog's uh, 2D list that has Charlie, uh, Snuggle Master, and then we'll have Odie, who's pretty dumb. Okay, so we have a cat's list and a dog's list. Now I'm going to make an animal's list of cats and dogs. And now we print it. Boom! <gasps> Whoa! Look at all those, look at all those leading square brackets. There's so many square brackets, right? So the fact that there's three leading square brackets indicates that this is probably a three-dimensional list. Um, yeah, so what now do we do with this? So here's a brain puzzler. What happens if I do, what will happen if I do cats append, uh, we'll say Tybalt is napacious because he's a sleppy dude. So if I hit this append and then I look at what side, what's inside animals, what will I find? Will animals have changed? Will animals have changed? I'll give you a few seconds to think about that. See if anybody pops it into Discord, what they think. And feel free, just say yeah, or will it change? Yeah, change, or no, no change. People have varying levels of delay as well, so. Oh, here's some typing. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe it will change. I enjoy the, the hedging. <laughs> it should be smacked at the end of the cat list. But what will happen to the animals list? What will happen to the animals list? So I'm going to run this. We'll look at cats. So cats has Tibble and Napatius. Will animals...
animals change? Does animals change? Oh no. Oh guys, 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 look, it changed. Animals changed. What? I changed one variable and a different variable changed. What? We, what? What we learned early on in the semester that that's not how things work. If you do A equals two, B equals A, A plus equals one, B will still be two and A will be three. Right? They, they, they don't watch each other. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Our world has turned on end. So that's going to be a question we're going to talk about a little bit today. What, what was that about? Uh, the other question from the slides was how would I represent a chessboard? A chessboard is an 8x8 eight by eight, uh, eight by eight grid of squares. I uh, just took my time. Yeah. A uh, chessboard is an 8x8 eight eight grid of squares. So one thing I could do is I could have a single character that represents each piece and then go through the board. And you're going to laugh at me because I messed this up. It goes rook, bishop. Is it not bishop? It goes rook, bishop, knight, rook, bishop, knight, queen, king, bishop, no, knight, bishop, rook. Okay, so knight, queen, king, uh, uh, knight, queen, king, Oh, oh, king. King will be K-I. <sighs> king, uh, knight, bishop, rook. And there are eight there. Cool. The course schedule for this course, it's on the course website. And you can also, if you're just looking for what order we're going to cover topics, uh, keep the slides pretty much in order. Yeah, rook, knight, bishop. Wait, rook, knight, bishop? No. The knights next to the king and queen. Are the bishops next to the king and queen? Mm -hmm. Oh, they are. I think so. Man, you can tell I don't play chess much. Or if I do, I play it online and it's already set up. So we think of that, that's our first row. Like that's the top row. And then so what's underneath of that? Well, underneath of that is pawn, pawn, and I just, I'm just gonna copy. And then after that, I might just have an empty row. Zero, zero, zero. Uh, zero, zero. Uh oh. I'm so wrong. It's okay. I'm more of a go player, so. <laughs> uh, and there's four of these. So, one. Two, three, four. And then we get the pawn row back. I know this is like the hardest thing to look at ever. Pawn row. Boop. There's going to be an error at the end of this, and it's going to be very upsetting because I'm going to have to. And then we take the first row back and we just reverse the king and the queen. No, we don't because they sit opposite each other. So many chess pinions. <gasps> Chessboard is not defined. Oh, shoot. So if I print out chessboard, I'm going to get the same long thing back. So we'll do for row in chessboard, print row. And so now we have our chessboard. It is an eight by eight board, right? Eight columns, eight row, shoot. Did I, I did too many middle rows. Well, this is a weird eight by nine chessboard. Uh, People in China and people in Korea and Japan. I think it's more common in Japan that they train from a young age. I mean, we already made a checkerboard. 
They don't focus at school, but rather go. Yeah. Uh, but now, now AI has won at Go or is beaten the world champion. So, oops. Um, livelihood. Oops. So now the question is, how do I get? What are the? How do I get the kings? Well, actually, who cares about the kings? <laughs> How do I get the queens? They're the they're the important pieces. How do I access the queens? So I have this chessboard variable. How do I access the queens? Uh, the rules are simpler for Go, much simpler. The strategies are not simpler than chess. Uh, Go has a much larger state space. Meaning, there's more possible Go games than there are possible chess games. Um, and it's a bummer because you. Oh, well, if you got. We might do a. Uh, Eric and I might do a Go show match. We already did one to test out the streaming before we really got the streaming circulated around, but. We, he and I are almost completely equally matched. Um, Chessboard zero three. Zero three for a queen. I like zero three. What about the other queen? So let's try chessboard zero three, and we're hoping to see a Q pop out. Boop. Got him. Got her. So how do I get how do I get the other queen? Remember it's an eight by nine board. I messed up. So the way we get the other one is we have to go to the bottom row, which is the ninth row, meaning it's index eight. So when you have a two-dimensional space like a chessboard uh, or a Go board or a Nine Man's Morris board, uh, you you refer to the row number, meaning like where they are vertically, right? So if I want the top queen, I want the first row. And if I want the, that row's index is gonna be zero. And then if I want the king, I'm gonna look at, that'll the first number will be zero, and then the second number will be zero, one, uh, zero, you can't see, one, two, three, four. So if I want the king, I do zero, four. Uh, yeah, so we'll come back to this. Okay. So a list of lists is referred to as two dimensional. So a uh, one dimensional list just has normal values in it, like strings or uh, integers or booleans or whatever, just normal values in it. Um, though you could technically consider a list of strings a two-dimensional list because you can index in the strings as well. Uh, so then, well, actually, that's a, I don't know, we'll get back to that in a minute. Two-dimensional, uh, a two-dimensional four by four list would be, it would be uh, 16 items and there'd be the first list, there'd be a sub list of four and then a second sub list of four and so on and so forth. So. Uh, so how do I get the nine from this list? Well, it's in the third row, so my first index will be two, and it's in the first column, so my second index will be zero. Uh, when you're doing, when you're looking at two-dimensional lists, the first index is the row, the second index is the column. Uh, how do I loop through the third row, and how do I loop through the second column? So how do I print Nine one two three and four five or sorry nine one two three from the third row, and then how do I print uh, two six one five from the second column? How do I do that? Oh man, how do I do it? I think I have a sample situation here. Before I, I need to make sure I switch to pie chart. Okay, and then we're gonna look over here. 
More loops, function strings, more lists. Uh, function weirdness. Cool. All right, so I already have, let's, let's say goodbye bye for now. Um, so how do I get the nine? What do I print from matrix? And you might be saying, oh, Dr. Johnson, that's a global variable. Yeah, 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 it's a global variable. We're only doing it here. Actually, why even make it a global variable? Just shoop and boop. And we'll change this to name equals main. This is a, this is a relic of an ancient time. So how do I get the nine? The nine is in row two, column one, or row, sorry, row two, column zero. Uh, so let's just print, oops, let's print that. And we're gonna test as we go, test often, test early, test often, nine, awesome. So how do I loop through the third row? Oh my gosh, how do I print all the values in the third row? Well, what's the index of the third row? The index for the third row is two. So how do I get, that's just a list, right? In a larger list. So then if I say four item in the matrix, two, print item, I'm expecting to get nine, one, two, three. <laughs> right? So if I want to loop through a row, this is how I do it. Now, how do I loop through the column and get rid of this pass? How do I loop through? Validating moves is annoying in a chess game, that's correct. Because it has a lot of rules. So yeah, how do I do this? Well, I want to look at each list, right? So that in the first thing, I'm just look, I'm just, I basically index into the third row of matrix and that gives me a list back and then I'm looping through that list so that gives me the whole row for the um, second exercise I want to get the second column how many of the sub lists do I have to look at all of them so for row in matrix right so I'm looking at each row I want to print out an element of that row which will be uh, its first element so print row one, we'll run it. So I'm gonna comment the rest of these out because it's kind of hard to look at. But yeah, so we're expecting 2615 and 2615, so we got it. So these are two very common ways of looping through a two-dimensional list is, or two-dimensional, yeah, two-dimensional list uh, is you loop through either one sub list or you loop through um, each row and then you print out one element of the row. That's how you get rows and columns. So now how do I print out the whole thing? How do I print out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? <laughs> Austin says, well, true. Thanks for playing chess. So I saw somebody, I think it was Sajel, posted, like, it's nested loop time. So for row in matrix, for item in row, we're basically just combining the last two things. Uh, we're just combining the last two loops together and we're putting the one that loops through, uh, we're more or less putting the one that loops through the rows inside of the one that loops through a column. So let's run it. Let's see. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We did it. Excellent. Yes. I hope I, oh no, I am in PyCharm. Whew. It's that streamer thing when you're like, oh, have I just been showing the wrong thing for 15, 20 minutes? Okay. Is a list of strings a 2D list? Yup. So if I want to get 
Um, if I have Gurdeep, Thomas, and Amina as a 2D array, how do I... I have three different rows of three different lengths, right? So this isn't a nice and tidy 4x4 four four matrix. This is a... Uh, this is a 2D list where the first row is seven long, the second row is six long, and the last row is five long. So it's not like a tidy rectangle. It's a rhombus. Yeah, rhombus. Mm. Mm. Best shape? I'm not sure, but I think it is rhombus. Rhombus. Okay. Rhombus. Okay. So it's okay if the rows have different thanks jules it's okay if the rules the rows have different do you want ups yeah all right well you have to cooperate if you want ups ah you're being a cat all right it's never a rare moment of catness do you want up come on oh, whatever just be a jerk okay uh yeah so it's okay if I have rows of different length. I just have to be careful then, right? Because I have to, when I loop through each row, I have to be careful that I don't try to access an element that doesn't exist, right? So if I did names two, six, I'd be looking for the seventh element of the word Amna, which is two past where uh, that string ends. So we would get an error. But yeah, you can use a, a 2D, a list of strings as a 2D list. In fact, uh, if we go back to the Pacharm, we've got to go back to the Pacharm. Uh, for our chess example, I could have done a chess board equals uh, I'm going to get it right this time. Rook, knight, bishop. Really? <laughs> Queen, king. Oh, but I can't... Uh, king. King will be x. <laughs> uh, bishop, knight, rook. And then uh, the second row would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then the next row would be 0, 0, 0, 0. Or, and so on and so forth. And I can actually use the same code that I wrote before. All of it would work the same. Uh, I generally don't like doing this because of stuff like X. <laughs> I would rather be able to put two characters there, right? So you don't want to have to... It's generally better to use two-dimensional lists when you can. But if you have a list of strings, you might be performing options on that... Oh, sorry, operations on that list of strings that look and feel like you're doing two-dimensional list stuff. That's sort of the point to take away from here. I would not recommend using a list of strings to store stuff most of the time. Okay, so back, back to the slides. Jules. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna show you guys this because it's important. Oh, we left. Yeah. Damn! Uh, Charlie and Jules were both in the same cat bed uh, together. Anyway, damn. Uh, okay, so let's go back to Chrome. Back to the Chrome. How do we create a blank 2D list? How do we put, make a 2D list with nothing in it? Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. Hmm. Cat can win. Cat needs to participate to be in cat can. Where is he? He's gone. He gone. Uh, we can have dog shaped cat can. Come here. Come here, you sleepy nugget. Ooh, he's very sleepy. Oh. Okay. Um, how do we define a new 2D list? Same way to define a 1D list, actually. So. <laughs> he was sleeping. Okay, so I've got to go back to Pie Charm again. This has been very back and forthy. No. Yes. So a new 2D list, if we want an empty one, uh, two, uh, 2D, oh, Charlie, you, your breath is kicking. Okay, just like that. That's how you make a new 2D list. That's how you make a new 2D list. 
Uh, sometimes you might have some variables that'll say, I want to make a 2D list of zeros that is an 8x8 eight eight 2D list. This used to be a class exercise. It's actually going to be an entire lab uh, next week, I think. So I'm not going to spend class time on it because I want to spend time expl explaining other complicated things. All right, so it's, it's would you rather time. Would you rather always have to sing when you're speaking, but you have an okay singing voice? And no, if your singing voice is better than just decent, it will just remain decent. It will be, you'll be demoted down to decent singing voice, which for some of you is gonna be a deal breaker. Or a voice actor of your choice narrates your life, but everyone around you can hear it. Um, and you get to update that choice once a month. Um, and everybody hears everybody hears that the them speaking their native language. So uh, they would still hear the voice, but it would be like Robin Williams speaking Spanish. Um, so yeah. Oh, so the question I'm getting here is why don't I put two like four square brackets, like square bracket, square bracket, square bracket, square bracket to initialize a 2D list? It's not actually an empty 2D list at that point. It's a 2D list with one empty row in it. It's just like not as empty as you can get a 2D list. So, weirdly enough, you make an empty 2D list by just making two square brackets. Morgan Freeman, people usually pick Morgan Freeman. I would definitely probably pick uh, Robin Williams or... Um, Gilbert Godfrey? Gilbert Godfrey if I wanted to troll people, yeah. Uh, you have to keep in mind, though, for this option that the voice actor will also be, like, remarking upon your mood and your thoughts and things like that. So it's got a downside. So you could be like, uh, someone could come up to you and be like, look at my baby! Look at my adorable baby! And you'll be like, oh, that's a very cute baby. And then Morgan Freeman will go, he lied. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, gosh. So, it is a double-edged sword, but it's pretty cool. James Earl Jones. Um, Angela Lansbury would probably be my third pick. Angela Lansbury is the best. She's the teapot from Beauty and the Beast, if you're not familiar. Oh no, you guys can't see the, the slide. It's very important. There's a fish singing. Gandhi. Okay, I gotta make this poll. Sorry, Charlie. I mean, you're welcome, Charlie. You get to go back to napping. Fast poll. <laughs> right. I love how I answered a question about babies, even without our, our baby question asking friendo. What about Bill Nye or Neil Tyson? Uh, those guys would be pretty great. It's not their personality though, it's just their voice. Is Fast Pole busted too? Is the whole internet, okay. Uh, singing voice or narrating voice. Singing, narrating. Uh, we're gonna put this again in animals. That's all of my things are gonna be in animals. I'm gonna create my poll. Bam! It's created. We're gonna drop this into the Discord. Bell, 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 bell. Okay. And then back to the slides. And we'll check in on that later. Why are you fools using both? Austin is being a bit spicy today. Okay, so we talked about two-dimensional lists. Uh, and you're going to do a... Uh, your lab next week is going to kind of get into the nitty-gritty. But today, the most important thing I want to spend the remainder of the time on is this very difficult concept of mutability. So, uh, mutability in Python is... Ba basically, what I'm going to tell you is that I lied on the second day of class. 
when I said that variables don't watch the values change, they're not sticky, well, it turns out, it turns out some of them are, yeah, but we hadn't introduced any of them yet. So now we're going to talk about what that stickiness, what I mean by stickiness, and then also how it's going to uh, affect you when you're programming and debugging stuff. So um, let's get, let's get trucking here. Present, present. Things that are immutable are simple things. They're usually considered like single values, right? So booleans, integers, floats, and strings are all immutable. Um, and what that means, so mutable means changeable. And so when in, in Python, what that means is that those things can't be, uh, th like three is always three. You can put a different value into a variable for four, but you're never gonna like change the fact that three is three. Um, strings also work the same way. Some of you may have tried to modify a single character in a string, and it'll give you something like strings are not mutable, or strings are immutable, or so on and so forth. Actually, let's go, let's go look at the error now. Boop, 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 boop. This is so tedious, flipping around and stuff and stuff. Do, 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 do. Python console. Do, 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 do. So if I do uh, cats one equals, or let's just do uh, cats equals uh, jewels, and then I do cats one equals o to make it jewels. Uh, it doesn't support item assignment. So technically, even though you can change the value of a mutable thing, you can't like an individual value for a mutable thing isn't really modifiable. Whereas when we look at things that are more like collections of stuff, more complex, larger lists, I can have a list of one, two, three, four, and I can change that list without having to swap it in and out by like adding five to the end or so on and so forth. Those things are called mutable. So if we remember way back when I said that you assign one variable to another, the values of the two variables aren't connected. The reason that was a lie is that only applies to immutable things, strings, integers, floats, booleans, none type, so on and so forth. All of those things are not sticky. They, if you assign a variable to another variable that contains an immutable value, the, they won't watch, they won't see changes to each other. However, Variables with mutable data store references or pointers as they're called, as you'll find out in 202 next semester. Um, so you think of references as addresses or like phone numbers or the place that you can, they actually literally are addresses in the way Python is implemented. Uh, so they are storing the location information for where the list is, not the entire list. So, for a immutable thing, I have my, my box, right? So variables with mutable, say this is an immutable thing. Uh, it's the, the string pen. If I put it in here, if somebody, if there's another box somewhere else here, ah, another different box, I would take the pen out of the other box, copy it and put it in here, right? So I get two separate boxes with two separate values of the pen. Doesn't work that way with lists. Lists can be huge. You can have a list that has like a gigabyte of data in it, right? And so when we do a simple variable assignment, we don't want to copy over a gigabyte of data. That's slow. What we would want to do is just have two different things that are looking at the same bit of data. So let me grab, so, uh, grab something big. Okay, something big. Say we have Charlie. Charlie is mutable. Uh, he has a lot of extra skin, so that, that bears out. Uh, so Charlie's mutable. I have one variable that points to Charlie. Say it's C. C points to Charlie. And then I do dog equals C, which actually just creates another pointer to Charlie. So now there's two things pointing to Charlie. So that if I say... Uh, oh, Charlie is now an upside down Charlie. Both of the variables will see the changes that I make to the actual thing that they're pointing to. It's really hard to, it's much easier to demonstrate in person in class with props and what have you, but 
uh, we're, this is what we're stuck with. So let's look at this code. What gets printed? Am I looking at the slides? Damn. No, I'm not looking at the slides. What does this code do? Uh, yeah, project one's a long boy. And a lot of you, this is your first like college level programming assignment and it's big. It's a lot of work to do. So get started early. So what does this do? So A equals one, B equals A, B plus E. Charlie wants to go outside with, with Natalie. Uh, so A equals one, B equals A, B plus equals one. So now B is equal to two. What is A equal to? Well, A is still equal to one, right? Because they're not sticky. They don't watch each other's changes. Uh, so if I have C equals one, two, three, four, D equals C, and I append five to D, now D is one, two, three, four, five. But what happens if I print C? Well, what happens when I print C is I get one, two, three, four, five. Right, and that's because there's this stickiness, right? D and C are both looking at the same list. And so if I change the list through D, it will be visible through C. Okay. Uh, so another way to think about this is uh, the variables that hold um, mutable data are references. They're like having a an address to someplace, right? So when I did D equals C in this previous slide, what I was essentially saying is like, hey, C, you have a lovely list there, or you have the address of a lovely list. Uh, I would also like to know where that list is so that I can, you know, perform operations on it or check it out and so on and so forth. So where did you say that was? And then it'll be like, oh, you get a reference to it. So IT355, oh, okay, I have a location for that list. I'm gonna write that down. If anyone asks, I also, now we both know where the same list is. And if any changes are made to it, we both see it. So it's, it's, it's a little complicated. So what if I don't want this stickiness because I actually want to have a new copy of the list, right? So when we do just D equals C, we're doing what's called a shallow copy of the list. And the reason it's shallow, I don't want to like break out the tablet and all that other stuff is, the reason it's shallow is I have like this seltzer can and I have one pointer to it and then I'm basically just taking two, whoop, two pointers to my seltzer can. And so it's shallow because I've not really copied the contents of this, right? If I wanted to copy the contents of this, I'd have to like in, inbubulate some more water and put some grapefruit flavor in it and, and actually make a copy of it. I have to pour it out, figure out the recipe and do a deep copy, meaning I actually get a separate can and put, you know, more seltzer into that can. So a shallow copy is just sort of like, uh, yeah, I'll point to that too. A deep copy is I'm going to completely reproduce that thing, right? So can I rip this in half? Oh, it's for me. Yeah, I don't care about that. Right, so say I have a list. Oh no, I need a pen. Is there a oh, pen? So pen. On this, I have a list, one, two, three, four, right? And then I have a variable that points to it. A shallow copy would just be create another variable that points to the same thing. A deep copy involves more work. A deep copy is when I actually look at this list and I go, oh, I have to, I have to copy the values of this list into another physical list so that there's two lists now, right? When I do D equals C and on lists, I'm not actually creating a new list. It's just, just one list that two variables look at. But when I do a deep copy, boop, I get two. So how do I do a deep copy? Uh, there are two fast ways to do a deep copy. I'm gonna kind of skip it. 
One is if I have a new list, I can. Whoop, if I have a new list, I can send the old list into the list function, and out will pop a brand new second list. Also, and this was something that was asked several weeks ago when we talked about splicing. This is my favorite, my robot head operator here. And what this is saying is splice the old list from the first item to the last item. And whenever you do a splice, it creates a copy of the list. So you're actually creating a copy of the whole list. Um, so yeah, let's let's like look at this in PyCharm to get some examples. Examples. Pop, pop, pop. I don't want to stop streaming yet. I mean, I do because I could take a nap, but I won't. Yeah, yeah. All right, so cats equals, or let's see, numbers equals one, two, three, four. Uh, D equals numbers. And then if I do D dot append five, and then I do D, I get one, two, three, four, five. And if I get numbers, I get one, two, three, four, five. Well, I might not want that. I might actually want D to be a fresh copy of numbers. So if I do D equals uh, list numbers, now if I do D dot append six, D, I don't know why, uh, D has one, two, three, four, five, six D, and numbers is now, so we did it. We made it so that now these mutable things are behaving like immutable things. Okay. So the other way we can do that is with uh, a robot, a robot head operator. So uh, D equals numbers robot head. And now D equals that, numbers equals that. And if I do numbers dot append uh, 23, then I look at D and it has not been changed. So both of those lines of code do a quick little deep copy for you. Um, so then the question on the lab next week will be, how do you deep copy a two-dimensional list? It's not as easy. You have to basically have a for loop that goes through and does deep copies of each row. Okay, back to the, back to the slides. So I made a big deal last time about the fact that when you send a variable into a function, if it gets changed in that function, it won't be seen by the calling function. That's actually not true for mutable things because what's happening is when the function's called, uh, you're getting a, it's doing that assignment under underneath the hood, which means that it's doing a shallow copy. So. The variable that you have inside of a function is a shallow copy of the variable that was outside of the function. And so uh, if that thing was a list or a dictionary or something else, then you're, you're going to actually be able to affect the variable in the calling function, which is a little scary time. It's a little scary town, but uh, generally you don't want to do this because it means that changes in your function affect other bits of your code and you want them isolated from each other. Other side effects may include swollen arguments, restless function bodies, itchy main, distended pythons, and aching conditionals. So ask your doctor about deep copies. Ding. Okay. Is that it? That's it. All right. I'm going to sit around for questions. Can't wait to start sorting lists. Yeah, that's a later lecture. Uh, all right, well, I promised you guys a further tour of the Minecraft server, but if you guys got to jump to your next class, by all means, I'll be waiting for questions in the Discord. Uh, feel free, by the way, to ask questions, even though I'm playing Minecraft. Playing or touring you through Minecraft. Come on. Come on. Uh, also, uh, OSX, the most recent version of OSX doesn't have like a game capture in OBS, so this will be a low frame rate. It's not a low frame rate for me, it's just going to be a low frame rate for you. I saw that last time when you guys were like, what, what the heck? And yeah, it's just, it's just a low frame rate. Um, okay, so here we are.
There's a Grand Central Station. This is all, this is uh, Ryan Barron creation. So we're gonna go, I keep getting stuck here. Oh, oh, we did it. We did it, here we go. Come on. Oh, there's like lag situations. Here we go. So, ooh, it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. This is a really long run that we have here. There's a chicken. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, even if there's an, an, a rogue chicken, I think I didn't get stopped at the Grand Central, now going into his deep mining operation. Uh, yeah, let's see um, if we can go back up to the Grand Central Station. Can you do embedded dictionaries? Uh, yes, you absolutely can. In fact, the uh, review exercise I did at the top of the class, you can rewind, uh, I did an embedded dictionary, so it was a dictionary of dictionaries. Come on, come on. I don't know why. Oh, right, I gotta... Uh, I gotta get out and punch. I think this is the way we go. Yeah. When creating a dictionary to add text from a file, can we use a for loop to append it all? Yeah, I think so. All right, we've arrived. That's a little bit of a vague question. It's not that I don't know the answer is, I'm not exactly sure what you're asking. Um, so here we are in, uh, oh, okay. I don't wanna to go to the nether realm right now. So here we are, it's, it's, look at this beautiful, there's some cows, some moo moo cows, and we have this lovely little seaside chalet here. Um, so yeah, we've got some ladders. For here there's a bamboo farm. It's all very exciting, very exciting. I unlocked a recipe by accidentally running into some sugar. But yeah, so this is what the TAs are up to. This is the magic of being a 201 TA. Oh no, oh, oh no. Oh, this is gonna take six years. Cause I'm beating a rock with a plant. What's the practical use of dictionaries? Excellent question. The dictionaries are super, super, super useful. What you use dictionaries for is when you're relating um, one kind of data, like one bit of information with another bit of information. So the example I used earlier is a, is a really good one in terms of it being somewhat practical. Like say you have your campus ID, right? That's unique to you. If I wanted to store everybody's um, information from the class in into I have the choice of putting them in a list or in a, in a dictionary, right? Well, if I put them in a list of lists, like a 2D list, then that means that I have to, um, that means I have to look through the whole list to find uh, Drew, right? So I have to go through each element of the list and say, are you Drew, are you Drew, are you Drew, are you Drew? Or do you have the same campus ID as Drew? So do, 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 and hop through the whole thing. If I have a dictionary, I just say, give me the information associated with the name Drew or with Drew's campus ID and bloop, I have all that information right there immediately. I don't have to, I don't have to write a for loop to get all of that stuff. And so when you're trying to associate some data with like a unique identifier, dictionaries are so good. Uh, they're also really fast. So um, when you get into 341, we'll be going into the, which is the data structures class, we'll be going into how dictionaries are written. Like how would you write a dictionary? Um, and we will find when we do that, that dictionaries are super duper fast. Super duper fast. About to dox me on stream. I, no, I'm not gonna dox you on stream. I, uh, 
I would be. It would be weird if I had your campus ID memorized. Uh, all right. So here's our beautiful. Here's. Uh, I believe this is Hirsch and Ryan's uh, pal palatial getaway. So. Look at this. This is, this is beautiful. Oh, that's a creeper. <laughs> or is it Hirsch? Um, yeah. So, this is our Minecraft server. I'll dox you. Uh oh. Don't dox me, bro. What's in here? This is. What is. What is that? I have questions. It's also very dark in here. This is ominous. Anyway, everybody, uh, I will be around. So I think the way I'm going to do office hours for 201 is I'm going to sit in the general chat room. And then if any of you want to show me your code or do something one-on-one, -on -one, I will pull you into a room that we can talk one-on-one. -on -one. But otherwise, I'll just sit in a room. And a bunch of you can come in if you have questions or just say hello. Um, and so on and so on. But yeah. Go through the painting. Oh, is the painting like a, 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 a secret passage? Nope. Or nope. 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 This is all vanilla Minecraft too. No plugins, no add-ons, no main memory. All right. Cool guys. Well, uh, I believe this concludes my broadcast day for today. Next class, we'll go over more Minecraft creations, more would you rathers, and I don't remember what's on the schedule. I think it's program design. So, but you now, I mean, you did last class, have all the information that you need to successfully complete project one. Do get started on it. Uh, do get started on it now, and so that you can use the Discord office hours and things like that to get help early because we're gonna just be swamped next week. and. Uh, the Discord queue is going to be outrageously long. And we want to get to all of you to help you, but at the same time, when there's a just a 50 of you waiting or something like that, we're, you know, we're only so many people. Um, also, uh, actually, I'm going to show you a slide from the... We kind of switched up the order a little bit, but I want to show you the slide from the program design lecture because it's it's relevant here um wow just the internet in general is being pretty cantankerous today would you rather okay so yeah so yeah um wait no 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 so here's, here's the big lesson for doing software development. If I could travel back in time to when I was a comp sci student at UMBC, a bachelor student, and I only had three seconds, like I come out of some sort of vortex and I see a young, quiet, tired man that is me of the past, and I only have three seconds to tell them to give myself useful information, I will say, Ben, past Ben, Test as you go, test as you go, as I'm pulled back into the vortex, test as you go. And what do I mean by test as you go is, do not try to write your whole project and then start testing it. Don't do that. Write a few lines, run those lines. See if they're doing what you expect them to do. Write a few more lines, run those lines. Test them to see if you're going. So you should test as you go. You should absolutely test as you go. I'm gonna jump, I'm gonna actually jump up and down. Test as you go, it's so important. Test as you go, test as you go, test as you go. Test as you go! Because the thing is, uh, it's really anxiety, like programming is very, an it's an anxious, anxiety-filled activity. And so if you build up this big, your big, beautiful software project, you just, oh, it's, it's so, it's so wonderful. Testing it feels like you're attacking it or you're criticizing it. And every time you get an error, it hurts and so, so on and so forth. And so the more and more you write and the more and more you build your masterpiece, the more anxious you're going to be about testing it. 
And the thing is, you're going to spend the bulk of your time debugging, not writing the code. So do it as you go. And also, if you catch a bug as soon as you write it, it's going to take you a lot less time to find it. So please, please, please test as you go. Oh, there's also another slide. Test as you go. Just test as you go. Should you test? Yeah, as you go. Really? Yes. I'm not, if, if, if any of you might have some questions about this, you might not understand. Uh, uh, I can explain it another way. Test as you go. Just test as you go. There's a sign outside my office that just says test as you go. And the reason for that is it's really good advice. Test as you go. If, if you disregard every other kind of bit of advice about being a student or a programmer or whatever, if you only take one bit of advice from me, it's test as you go. So here's a graph. For those of you who are wondering over time how much testing there should be to going, there should always be a bit more testing than going. So test as you go. Just seriously, I can't, I can't ring this bell loud enough. Test as you go, please. For the love of everything, test as you go. Also, in all seriousness, you should test as you go. I know it's stressful to run your code, but you got to run it in little bits. So that, you're not, that way you're not running a whole bunch of code at once. Um, when you get errors, you're not dumb. You're not bad. Errors are part of growing and they're part of learning. And you can't expect to sit down at a piano and play everything without making an error. And every time you find an error, you fix it, you're going to get a new error. And that can be really, really demoralizing. When you're writing these big projects, it can be really demoralizing to have an error and then fix it. And like, yeah, I fixed it. I found it and I fixed it. And then you run it and you get another error. Celebrate those moments because you've defeated one of the, one of the bosses, one of the mini bosses between you and finishing the project. So when you get that new error, celebrate the passing of the old error. So it's not, there's actually a study of people when they code in a group, just sitting around a table, even if they're not working together on the same project, the fact that people vent and they talk to themselves and they speak aloud like, why don't you work? Ah! Uh, helps because it's emotionally like, makes you feel less stupid because when you're alone and you're in your, your office or wherever you're at, uh, you're gonna get a bug and you're gonna feel like, I bet everybody else is done. I'm so slow, I'm behind, I'm stupid. You're not slow. Uh, you should test as you go and you'll be, you'll, it'll, it will save you so much time. It will save you so much. I could have had so much more fun in college if I tested as I went. So uh, that's all for that spiel. Am I gonna give this spiel to you again when I do the program design lecture? <laughs> yeah, yeah I am, I'm gonna do it again. Might add a little bit of improv, like put something else in there, but it is actually super important that you test as you go. I've gotten so, I've trained myself so well that even when I'm live coding, if, if I don't run the code that I'm writing fairly often, I get itchy. I just get like, uh, cause eventually you get to feel like if you're writing code, if you're starting to write a lot of code that you haven't, you know, stop, test as you go. Uh, it's a waste, you're actually just wasting your time. Uh, and I want you guys to, Enjoy yourself as much as you can in these special times. All right, I'm gonna leave you alone. Finish the video and go and take a nap or do whatever it is you've been doing to stay sane. Be excellent to one another, be patient. I know a lot of you are trapped with your families and you can't go out anywhere or see any of your friends. But yeah, be patient, be excellent. If people are snappy, don't snap back because it's a hard time for everybody. Anyway, have a good, day weekend now have a good weekend get your lab done and your project and see you in discord